Ah, welcome to Cashing in the Northwest. I know you know that I know that you know this is the official podcast of Geo Woodstock 18 in the great Pacific Northwest. Each week we're going to talk about caches and cashers from here and all around the globe. So while you're deciding to wear pants or not, we'll (laughs) be catching in the Northwest. I'm going with not. (laughs) Well, that means, of course, it's time to bring in our malevolent macaque. Some say he hoards geocache logs, and others say all of his geocache hides are along his old paper route. All we know is he's called Land Monkey. (laughs) Hey, everybody. That's an unexpected introduction. (laughs) It caught me off guard. uh, So (laughs) for those who are regular listeners to the podcast, uh, we try and, or my lovely co-hosts try and come up each week with something new and unusual and uh our special guest i believe was participating (laughs) in the introduction and i intentionally (laughs) removed my headphones because i didn't want to spoil it i I didn't know what was coming and uh i was pleasantly surprised and and quite amused and with all of that i am going to bring in the uh the the genius behind that which is day tea coffee (laughs) welcome to the show again jesse thank you hello (laughs) good to have you back it's wonderful to be here. <laughs> it's wonderful to have you, and I'm Absolutely. still laughing about that introduction. So. <laughs> Good stuff, you guys. Good You'll stuff. never look at a macaque the same way. That's right. I didn't even know I was looking at one to start with. So, <laughs> hey, you know, when you look in the mirror, <laughs> tonight we are going to talk about difficulty in terrain ratings uh, with our returning friend of the show, JT Coffee, who. Uh, has done some brushing up and is definitely well prepared for tonight. <laughs> Makes one of us. Yeah. Well, somebody <laughs> has to be. That's so. right. Not <laughs> us. Tonight, tonight it's Jesse. <laughs> All right. Well, you know what? Uh, uh, as we've done our welcomes and our introductions, we're also going to do our promotions here, we, as we always do at the beginning of the show, which is a quick reminder that we appreciate the support of our patrons. All of you who help to keep this podcast coming each and every week, and a special thanks to Land Sharks, note Swimming Shark, uh, our corporate Denali level sponsor. Land Sharks is still open for online orders and are shipping daily, so now is the time for cash maintenance. Please keep their small business in mind for all your geocaching supply needs. And folks, you know what? If you want to know more about supporting this show, just head on over, click that Patreon link on the cachingnw.com a website. He always puts an extra syllable or two in website. A website. Just for you, Chris. Oh, thank you. Hey, folks, it's time for one of my favorite sections of the show. It's a glow. Hmm. That's rhyming. I like that. The glow is the geocache log of the week. Whether you read it, whether you wrote it, we want to hear about it because great logs simply make geocaching better. You can send an email or a recording to feedback at cachingnw.com. You know, you can always call in to 253-693-TFTC or use a voicemail tool on the website and show us just how you glow. Well, then it's time to read the glow, don't you know, as long as you like to rhyme. This one was a founded log from Kev McD, who found the red pill or the blue pill. He says, like all amazing geocache stories, this one has all the elements. A journey, sacrifice, pain, suspense, a trail, and eventually success, love, and riches. Okay, I made the last two up. (laughs) A number of years ago, I worked with Team K1W1, or maybe they pronounce it Kiwi, I don't know, to create some Arduino-based caches in the Lower Mainland. One of them still exists over there and has garnered a sizable collection of favorites. Chico and the Misses are legends over on the mainland. Many caches worth a favorite had somebody recounting a similar or nearby Chico and the Misses cache that existed before I started caching. 
These legends had since moved to some remote island not far from Nanaimo. Apparently, as the story goes, Chico and the missus emerged with a local Arduino-based cache a number of years ago. Several attempts were made by me to plan a trip, but alas, it never came to be. Until this weekend. I was determined to log it. Challenge accepted. I managed the first stages easily on the first day, but with the long light of evening approaching and my early start chasing me back to my Airbnb before the final. Not much to recount here except finding the pill was a lot like the scene where Gollum fawns over his precious, talking softly to it. It's a wonder it really is. Up early in the morning and with the cash owner's assurance there is a trail, I set out. I'm sure I circumnavigated the coordinates twice and found no trail into the cache location, so deer paths and bushwhack. Of course, in a cache of this caliber, pain and sacrifice are expected by the powers that be. At some point, I caught the edge of a fallen log and face-planted. No worries about my nose, it looked like that before. But my water bottle became the sacrifice. More on that in a moment. The cache owner made me nervous with a comment about it taking even him some time to find it. But after a reasonable search, cash in hand, I signed the log. The cash in hand, I went over for a celebratory sip of water and empty water bottle pocket. Fair trade to the geocaching powers. It was lost 100 meters ago in the middle of bushwhack as a sacrifice to signal the frog. I turned to leave, and that's when I found the trail. That's how it goes. I'm trying to decide if I should give this a favorite point. Kidding. So I'm sure he did. But yes, as we often say, bushwhack in, trail out. Exactly. Yeah. If there's no MO, blood, you're sure. not really geocaching. <laughs> right. That was a great log. That was good. That was a good log. <laughs> Sounds like that contribution. You have to look up that cache. A future road trip when we yeah. road trip again. Yes. I'm seeing yeah. hashtag BITO. Bushwhack mm -hmm. in trail out. Mm, there you go. Ooh. <laughs> Is that Bito, Bito, Bito? Ooh. <laughs> New controversy. There we okay. go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I say it's hashtag B I T O. Oh. B E E E Y E T E E. No. O H. E A U X. Mm. Oh, we are having too much fun tonight. Hey, if you want to get in on some of the fun tonight, you can use hashtag DT to add to the chat. I got it as short as I could for you, folks. I'm saving you a whole lot of keystrokes there. Yeah, D E E T E E. <laughs> oh, no, wait. That's not as short as I hoping. <laughs> okay. It's dot without the O. Oh, no. okay. Can I buy a vowel? Uh, urban and transit. I don't, I don't really care. How about a Y? <laughs> oh, and you can use the hashtag FATAS, which probably needs more vowels. Probably. You want to bring up a topic for the after show. And of course, our chat lackey is working hard to get all of your comments into the show notes so we don't miss anything. Is he working hard? I'm looking at him. Yeah. No, he's shaking, he's no. shaking his head. No, he he's not working hard yet. You guys got to work him a little harder. All Throw right. some content at him. Make him work. <laughs> <laughs> Want to see some things, some smoke coming off those fingers there. <laughs> there uh, yeah. He's, he's surfing Facebook on his phone. I think he's playing candy crush. <laughs> well, <maybe that. laughs> we got to get some work to him. Okay. Uh, well, we've got some news and, I, unless you've hidden under a rock, which is actually pretty good for what we're doing right now in this mm -hmm. social distancing, physical distancing we're doing, um, you know, things are getting canceled and it's with heavy hearts and then out of, out of an abundance of caution, the Tri-Cities Geocoin Challenge scheduled for June 5th, 25th through 28th, 2020 is canceled. It was not an easy decision to make. However, we believe it is the right decision. We'll resume the event in 2021 and continue to focus on planning our efforts towards next year's scheduled event for June 24th through 27th, 2021. Please mark your calendars and look forward to seeing you all in 2021. Mm. So, 
It's funny, you know, this is probably the first year in several years that I might have actually been able to make that event. And well, now it didn't happen. <laughs> so, well, that's that's the beauty about ongoing events. Okay, we'll just put it yeah. off for the year. Yeah, you yeah, know? it is good. And uh, yeah, three hams in a row uh, was sharing uh, sad about Tri Cities, uh, had to to cancel his hotel as did we um we were looking forward to it it's a great event so you know what if you haven't been to the tri-cities geocoin challenge um put it in your calendar we know the dates for 2021 now there you so go and ahead put it in june 24th to 27th 2021 it is a fantastic event it's a lot of fun mm -hmm. um, yeah see you guys there yeah it you know you can get all the geocaches done in a day Yes. It's, it's a bit of travel, but it's easy. Um, and yeah, it's a lot of fun it, and it's, it's a mega event. So, and, and if you go and find all the geocaches with Chris, he can tell you about all the roads that didn't used to be there. But That's there right. <laughs> <laughs> tell you all about Roy's Western Smorgie. <laughs> it's not there anymore. And the yeah. rattlesnake that was in the church. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay. And okay, I remember well, we'll driving look out to... on the road going. Wait a minute. We used to have to go out and around. Yeah, this road right. wasn't even here. And do you know why it's called Bombing Range Road? Well, Chris does. <laughs> yes, Chris I does. do. <laughs> All right. Well, you know, for just, well, I won't even know what the price would be, but you could geocache Tri-Cities with Chris at the Northwest. I should auction myself off. You should. You really should. should. Yeah. Okay. That sounds like it's going to happen now. We've got, a, we've got over a year to plan that. Let's Let's look at that. But first... I wanted to take a quick second break from our podcast to, to congratulate another podcast. Yeah, there are some other podcasts out there. I know. What? And, uh, well, I was listening to it this week, and they, I think, kind of had an unintentional nod to our podcast. Are you curious? I am very okay, curious. Okay, let me explain. <laughs> no, there's no time. Let me sum up. Okay, seriously, as many of you know, I'm a serial hobbyist. I kind of have... You know, like hobby ADD. I, I do a lot of stuff. I, and uh, one of those things I like to dabble in is ham radio. So there's a podcast I listen to regularly called the Ham Radio Workbench. It's at hamradioworkbench.com, oddly enough. And it's hosted by a couple of great guys, Jeremy KF7IJZ and George KJ6VU. And this past week, those they guys hit funny last names. I know. <laughs> Most ham radio operators do. Yeah. Um, <laughs> this past week, they hit their 100th episode. It's their century club there. And the show was, I thought, fabulous. They had three or four guests on that have been guests throughout the year. They're knowledgeable in ham radio and, you know, electronics and computer nerdy stuff. It went over four hours long. But uh, at one point in this podcast, uh, as a lot of things, conversations nowadays do, they were talking about this current pandemic crisis. And specifically because they're tech nerds and a lot of them are in the communications industry they were discussing internet infrastructure and they were all very impressed uh you know things have been so reliable and stable with just everything turning upside down um you know shift in bandwidth and all that kind of stuff so nick who is kn6nk he's online twitter as at exploding lemur he had this little uh, thing to say about uh, infrastructure and it caught my attention listen to this all of a sudden have a lot of traffic it, well, actually, it, it actually kind of makes a little bit of sense um, because the the big change is that you all of a sudden have a lot of traffic on consumer ISPs during work hours. And the thing is, the peak traffic time for consumer ISPs is actually at 9 p.m. Thursday. So there you go. All of you in the chat have com 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 combined your forces to make the peak Internet travel. Uh, internet travel, internet traffic, 9 p.m. Thursday. I don't think that's a coincidence. I think it's because you guys are all uh, hammering away and trying to bury the chat lackey in as much content as possible. <laughs> Good job. So, there, you know, I, hey, I think it was great of the for, of them to uh, give us accolades, even if maybe it wasn't intentional. And uh, I want to thank all of you in the chat and you listeners for having such a profound impact on Thursday night internet traffic. Hello. On all the traffic on the internet. I mean, it's based off of the time this podcast is. Yeah. Is, uh, it does seem to appear that way. So, yeah, so obviously. I was thinking it might be fun if a bunch of random geocachers all of a sudden gave them a congratulatory shout out on their podcast on social media. So you can go to at ham workbench on Twitter. There's a Facebook 
group at Ham Radio Workbench, hamradioworkbench.com as their website. And, uh, you know, if you're sitting at home looking for something to do, you might look at studying for a ham radio license because I think it's a lot of fun. So, and a useful skill. There you go. There you go. Can it was you, fun. If you were to do that, if you were to decide, you know what? Jim's just given me a great idea. I want to <laughs> learn how to be a ham radio operator. Uh, where would you start? Where, where would you even well, figure this out? I, I don't know the Canadian uh, radio support, but ARRL is the American Radio Relay League. ARRL.org is uh, the U.S. lobby organization for that. But one thing I went to, hamstudy.org is where I, where I studied for my tests. And you can go there, create a free account. And the, the question pool is uh, public knowledge. So you can study the questions and it'll drill you and quiz you like flashcards and go back and take practice tests. But ARRL is a great organization to support. And hamstudy.org is a great place to test. There are many others too. So very yeah. cool. Very it's cool. a lot of fun. We Thank have you. several hams in the chat. We do. We do. But before we get into that, I I, I got to, Jesse, Udak loves your glasses. Thank hey. you very much. There you go. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, there's, yeah. Uh, there's a surprising number of hams who uh, are participating in the chat tonight. And yeah. uh, I also see a number of uh, familiar faces or at least familiar names uh, who I haven't seen in a long time, but uh from across Canada here as well. So it's awesome to have all you guys joining us tonight. Thank yeah. you, everybody who is joining the podcast and destroying yeah. the internet at 9 p.m. <laughs> on a Thursday night. And you guys and, uh, I was going to say, speaking of Canada, I am in the chat, who is AF70, by the way, on ham radio, says, look up uh, RAC, the Radio Amateurs of Canada. There you go. So now I know. There you go. Something else to do in yeah. this <laughs> time. That's right. And, and we should mention three hams is not... A ham. No. <laughs> He's three. No. <laughs> three. <laughs> well, three hams you know? does not equal ham, so X equals three. Now he's got something else to pick up on. So there you uh, go. Yeah. <laughs> um, so. I've got I've had people for years trying to pressure me into beginning getting my <laughs> ham radio license. I don't know who <laughs> might that might have pressured you. I have no idea. <laughs> Just saying. All right. Well, we do have some other news tonight. Um, we had some feedback from Wet Coaster via email. In response to last week's show, show 349 on tools of the trade, he said, I have a Chirp app on my Android phone and it works great. And uh, he gave the the URL for it that maybe we'll paste that in a chat. But I think the, the key thing you need to know is it's double lsoft.chirp. So, I have one too. L-soft. Oh, you can't really see it. It's still kind Just of bright. Too. I've got that too. What's yeah, the app super, called? It's super great. What's the app called, Jesse? Chirp. Oh, it's just called Chirp. Okay. Yeah, stick with me. Kind of complicated. Chirp. <laughs> Ooh, I love this. I know. Hope, you, hope you wrote that down. <laughs> Can you spell that? Yeah. C um, as in C-E-E. C- H <laughs> as in, no, right. Many, many R's. <laughs> this is why Jesse fits in. Oh, my. Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, All right. Yeah, it so, works great. It actually also... Um, it keeps a log of all the times I've used it and all the caches that I've used it for. So if I need to go back or if something doesn't work and I need to go back a different day, you can see a whole list of all of the different caches and the GC codes and the, the keywords that you need. It's 10 out of 10. Nice. There it is on screen in case you need to see it. Nice. Oh, I should sure. check that out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for a visual like audience yeah, yeah. It. <laughs> it's important to get all the the senses and and intelligences you know Absolutely. as you mm-hmm. yeah so i didn't know that android fa- phones had the ant plus chip in there to be able to talk with chirps suck it iphone user <laughs> <laughs> Finally, <laughs> finally, something I have. <laughs> that escalated years. quickly. <laughs> yeah, because really? we're not using Dark Sky anymore. Thank you, Apple. <laughs> oh, dear. Moving on. I was going to say, bring us back on topic, please. Someone, quickly. <laughs> uh, so oh, Hel- Helen says, thank you, JT Coffee. She just installed it. So there you go. Excellent. 
boom. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> hey, by the way, not all Androids have the Ant Plus. Uh, ah, there you go. Harry's a USB dongle to do it himself. Wow. There you go. That sounds <laughs> awkward, but okay. <laughs> Derp, it's misspelled. <laughs> Mangrove throat wobbler. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Oh, by the way, you don't have Cashly. No. Well, no. I do, actually. It's on my iPad. <laughs> there you go. No, I don't. And that's that's why I finally had something. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any you other know, we should like... have uh, Nick back on the on the show yeah. and just spend the first 15 minutes asking if he'll make cash. For Android. For Android, yeah. <laughs> he loves that question. Yeah. He really for Windows, yeah. Windows phone. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, and Palm Pre. <laughs> All right. Okay, Here's one more bit of news. Okay. Just one. Maybe. Maybe. Uh, this came yeah. from MC3Cats. You know he's the WSGA president. Yeah. He says, I have some bad news to report. I've been contacted this evening by one of the Washington State geocaching reviewers. I've been advised that publishing of new geocaches will be on hold until the stay at home order has been lifted. Mm. I posted this on the, you know, different Facebooks and websites so you can find it. So get the word out in your regions. That's what's going on. All right. Well, you know, I guess it's a sign of the times, but, uh, good time to work on puzzles yeah <laughs> i don't know I'm, I'm looking for a positive here i think social distancing is finally causing <laughs> the monkey to crash oh the monkey was cracked a long time ago <laughs> this is not new <laughs> you, you, just gotta look, section here. <laughs> you just gotta look at you know behind the podcast face he puts on every thursday night at nine o'clock when internet traffic is the highest hey, hey. that's right I work in healthcare. This is my good time. <laughs> I've been waiting all day for this. All right. Anyways, um, speaking of working in healthcare, also just want to put a shout out to uh, Pete. For Peach and Pete, we're thinking of you. Oh, absolutely. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Holding you know, them both close. There you yeah. go. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. All right. Well, hey, you know, we've rambled and had a great time. Should we just sign off and call it a night? Or yes, should we actually it, that's get. That's a wrap. We're good. <laughs> no. No, 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 I'm no, looking forward to another half hour of internet traffic, too. <laughs> That's <laughs> right. Powerful. Yeah. We have a tire nine o'clock hour. Internet. Yeah. <laughs> well, no more short shows. I mean, we've got, you know, standards <laughs> to lift up for the entire internet traffic. Hey, you know, we're coming through spring into summer. People are going to be mowing their lawns soon and need stuff to listen to. So, Ooh. yeah. Good so, idea. tonight, let's spend a little more time together, shall we? And let's talk mm. about. Difficulty terrain ratings with JT Coffee. It's great to have you here. Hello, thank you. Hello. Welcome now, to the show. Yes, welcome. You've survived <laughs> 24 minutes of us rambling of all kinds of crazy things. Now we're going to finally come around to you. And uh, maybe there's somebody joining us tonight that hasn't met you or hasn't had the pleasure of getting to know you. Can you tell us a little about yourself? Maybe where's home, including the complete street address, uh, front door combination? Absolutely. No, do yeah. <laughs> Coordinates, specific coordinates. Exact coordinates, yeah. yes. No. Yeah. <laughs> and tell us maybe how you're doing with your geocaching passion these days of lockdown. Oh, yeah. Well, it's, I am so glad to be back and chatting with you all. Uh, <laughs> I am, home is in Western Washington, just a little north of Seattle in the burbs. It's uh, called Linwood is the, is the town where I live. It's, it's um, I'm really finding yeah. it a little tough. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> uh truer than you know uh it's it's uh it's been tough to be patient um with how much i've slowed down my graph if you uh have seen the show before you know i'm a i'm into numbers and stats and visuals and graphs and things and my chart is my graph is going way way down <laughs> on my frequency and my average is just plummeting which is difficult to watch but um I've I have been lucky enough to have a few new caches placed just within walking distance of my house right before they shut off new caches being published. So those are my new lunch jog targets. <laughs> um, and I've also starting to look for some benchmarks that are between my house and the grocery store. Yeah. Since some of those don't require getting out of the car to log a find. I usually just take a picture if I can, and maybe it's a big water tower or something and I can just take a picture with my phone and I'm 
still contained within my vehicle. So I'm not loitering around or, or getting too close to other people. Um, and I have set an intention of solving a few white whale puzzles that I have that have just been lingering on my my ignore indefinitely list because they're too difficult, but I'm, I'm going to do it this time. And uh, there's always trip planning as well and dreaming of times when we can all go out and hang out together and, and drive and cash wherever we would like to go. Yes. We'll, we'll get back there soon enough. Uh, but yeah, that sounds like a lot of great things to keep you busy. Uh, you seem like the type who doesn't sit on her hands for too long. <laughs> I don't. No. <laughs> Constantly busy. I I have, I've, I've met my step goal every day of quarantine because I just, nice. Good for you. Yeah. For you. I can't yeah, say I, I've done that. I've, um, <laughs> I try and I get close, but yeah. I don't always hit it. But mm -hmm. uh, but I try. I try. Good for you. Well, you know what? Tonight we're going to dig into difficulty and terrain ratings. And uh, so we've brought in our statistician, our, our expert numbers lady to come and join us. Um, but to start us off, let's explain a little bit about what the rating systems are mm -hmm. and how they were originally intended by HQ to be used. There's a there's a link. Um, Chris, can you drop that link into the into the chat for the? Folks you better watch? believe it. Awesome. <laughs> so that link is going to take you exactly into geocaching.com's help page uh, to where they describe this stuff. But in summary, every geocache has a difficulty or a D uh, rating and a terrain or T rating on a five star scale, and it's mm -hmm. known as the DT rating. But uh, you know, there's the brief summary, but uh, but Jesse, let's hand it over to you. Yeah, it, it. every single cache has this DT rating and there's 81 different combinations. And it is part of what the cache owner does uh, is they load in the information for the cache that they want to place. And it's, it's part of the online worksheet when you're putting in the name and you're putting in the coordinates, you then tell everyone, it's just a bit of data that you give your finders on what they can expect. And it helps people be prepared um, but it's, it's, uh, it, it just gives you a little bit of extra about the cash. Nice. Hey, a little bit of extra. I like it. <laughs> did you know there's an official table to help you assess your difficulty and terrain ratings? Yes, I do love a good chart. <laughs> mm. And I, it's funny, this chart is called lots of different things. I was traveling once and I was talking to some local cashers about their matrix and they were working on their matrix and there's a bunch of matrix hides along this one path and they were recommending it to me. And I thought, gosh, what on earth are you talking? A matrix challenge, I'm like yeah, the matrix challenge. I'm like, there's a what's what on earth is a matrix is like challenge? Mac, it's Kev MacD's uh, log about the blue pill and the red pill. That's yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly. <laughs> I was shocked, and then I thought that I totally missed out. And, and then then I said, well, you know, we 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 were working. We do a fizzy grid, and we, then we were talking parallel for a while. I didn't realize we were talking about the same thing. But um, so some people call it the the matrix grid. Some people call it the grid and some people call it the fizzy grid and that's because the first person to fill out each box of it their username was fizzy magic um similar to like the jasmer challenge the first person to do that that was part of their handle or like the big call challenge the challenge is named after the first person to to do it or to coin it or to start doing it and so that's how this grid, the DT grid, kind of arrived at the fizzy grid title. Um, and it has 81 different combinations that are um, really fun to mathematically calculate out and to, I, I, I am a box checker by nature. And so filling in all of those boxes is very satisfying for so, a lot of cashers. Second, Jesse, so <laughs> if, if someone's brand new to this idea, yeah. And we're going to say it's a fi it's five star system, five mm -hmm. difficulty, five terrain. How does that get to be 81 combinations? Well, because you can have half point increments. You oh. can have a one, one and a half, two, two and a half. You can't have a half. You have It starts at one. And then it can't have a five and a half. It stops at five. And so all of that together makes a, bo a grid of nine by nine. So 81 different combinations of of terrain and difficulty rating because you can have a cache that is really easy to find but really hard to get to once you get there then it's pretty mm -hmm. obvious you can have a cache that's really difficult to find but really easy to get to you can have it 
difficult both ways or easy both ways or somewhere in between. Perfect. Yeah, 80, 81's a good number. It's the number of home games the baseball season is supposed to have, but probably not this year. <laughs> fun fact. I yeah, like fun that. fact. Yeah. Well, so what if we call it the DT Fizzy Matrix Grid? Oh, I like that. Kind of gets yeah. all everybody in, incorporated yeah. there. You throw yeah. a little vowel in there and you can make a different word. Yeah. Ooh. Gets now that's a your challenge. Yeah. <laughs> it just makes me all warm and fuzzy for the fizzy. So a key point about this, fizzy matrix grid whatever we want to call it it's intended to be fairly objective i mean not math right math is math. A, I love, math is good math is hard sometimes in, in reality though it's kind of open to subjectivity uh, what's what's the best approach to take to this fizzy that, can, grid? that is such an it's such a great question it can certainly be a source of frustration because um it's it is all it originates from the cash owner and everybody is different and everybody has a different assessment of how hard or easy they think something is either how hard it is to get to or how easy it is to solve or so forth i have certainly traipsed all over a park and had to go to maybe like a six stage multi with a very low terrain rating and if you use the guidelines that would have a little bit of a higher terrain rating and i've i have i think we all probably have struggled over very low difficulty rated puzzles <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I have. <laughs> yep, definitely. Guilty. <laughs> it's su super guilty. <laughs> In fact, those are, if I see it like a one and a half star puzzle, I'm probably not able to solve it. <laughs> Give me a three star. That's, that's, that's my, that's golden there. Um, there is some guidance that head, uh, the HQ has, has given us to help determine these. And there are some visuals as you're filling out the worksheet when you're actually placing the cash, but that link that Chris put in there, um, they, it's a nice chart that helps you kind of figure out what exactly you're looking at it. Maybe if you're new at this, or maybe you're hiding caches in a place that you are new to, because they're also very cultural. A, a cache that is really difficult to find in Chicago might be really easy to find here just like all caches when you travel have kind of that cultural flavor to them. So like, for example, if a cache is, can be accessed from the sidewalk and it's really easily found, it can signed and replaced by someone in a wheelchair, that terrain rating should be a one star and it should have the accessible attribute on it as well. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have to step off the sidewalk, then it goes up a half a star. So that's one and a half. And then it goes up from there. And um, HQ gives a few more helpful hints. Like you can, it's a two star difficulty or a, a, a one and a half star difficulty. If you can find it or solve it within maybe 10 or 15 minutes, it gets up to, if you can do it in 30 minutes, that's two stars. Um, if, Two and a half. It's it's challenging, but if you've you know been a pretty experienced geocacher, then um, it might be pretty easy for you. And it goes up from there. Difficulty is difficult <laughs> 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 because um, hides and puzzles are you know, easy for the hider because they know the answer and they see a puzzle and they think that's, that would make a perfect geocache. They already know, and they know where they hide it. So they think, Oh gosh, that could be really easy. So, um, some more tips again, is to look at your, the local caching culture. What might be really easy is in one place might be hard in another. Um, and another strategy is appointing a beta tester for a puzzle or a hide if you need some feedback. Um, this ideally is a person that has more experience than you do in a particular area uh, who you give access to your puzzle or the coordinates before it's published. So you give them a little spoiler and they can tell you what they think that maybe they think maybe well, oh, that's a two star puzzle. I don't know. I really struggled. I think that's a three star puzzle and it just helps you bounce off of someone, the thoughts that you have before you publish it. So, so Jesse, we've got a, a question from the chat from cash Canada that, uh, that we're curious. Have you, have you completed your fizzy grid? I have, I have done one loop. There you go. Yes. Congratulations. Good job. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and I will say, we're going to get into this a little bit later, but I will yes. say in the Northwest, it is a heck of a lot harder to yes. complete your fizzy grid mm -hmm. than it is in some other areas. So I'm just going to throw that out. We're going to talk about that a little bit later. Yes. <laughs> While you're at it, we'll keep our chat lackey busy. Go ahead and tell us how close you are to filling out your first fizzy grid or if you nice. looped it several times. 
Mm. Yes. Y'all I have are more a visual than me. for mine. I'm working on them. I have to make it in my notebook. I have to figure mm. out how yeah. many I'm working on. So, and I check them off as I go. Nice. <laughs> Look at her. You do like charts and graphs, don't you? <laughs> I, do. I have a whole booklet of them. Oh my goodness. Like it's my calendar. These are all the multis I need and the, the uh, let's see, the micros I need, but we're off task. Sorry. <laughs> but we're all in. I was going to say, welcome to Cashing in the Northwest. <laughs> Rails us. <It's> yeah. <laughs> okay. I, I, I always have a question. When I'm doing something like a mystery or a puzzle cache, mm -hmm. does the difficulty apply to the puzzle or to the hide itself? That's a challenging one. In the in the puzzle or the challenge world, generally speaking, the difficulty is for the puzzle or the challenge and the terrain is for the actual hide. Although that's that's pretty much a cultural guideline. I know that's there's some guidance in the HQ document about that, but I certainly have found a few challenges where it was right on a sidewalk, but the terrain rating was a four and a half because of the challenge that mm. that cache represented. Yeah, that, that's a tricky one, right? Because then it can be kind of a little bit misleading. What's helpful is if in the description they explain that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I, I for myself, I, I, as everybody knows, I love earth caches and I've put a, a, a few of them out myself. And a couple of my earth caches are difficult and I very intentionally made them difficult to do. And the reason I did that is because I wanted to have an earth cache that's in a difficulty rating that isn't common because some mm -hmm. people also like to try and fill their fizzy grids with other cache types, not just fill it period, but actually fill it with a cache type. Mm -hmm. So I was looking and saying, what types of earth caches are there very few of? Oh, well then, you know, this certain difficulty level and this terrain rating, um, there's very few of them. So then I intentionally built a couple of earth caches that honestly are, are hard. You gotta, you gotta do a fair bit of work to, to get the answers. And uh, that way I was legitimately able to say it's a high difficulty and a low terrain rating. That's awesome. Thank you, Jesse. <laughs> I thought so too. <laughs> In my area, there are what we kind of culturally call them fizzy light challenges where you are trying to find a or fill a portion of a particular fizzy grid. So you're filling a fraction of your earth cash fizzy grid or something like that. So your those caches where you are paying particular attention to the variance or the uniqueness of the ratings are much appreciated by a lot of people for if challenge reasons and just finding diverse, interesting earth caches too. Very cool. I, I see our chat lackey is is back to work and and our uh, our show notes are bouncing around a little bit, but I know where I am, <laughs> and that is a question for you, Jesse, which is uh, tree climbers. Ah. Uh, how, yes. do, how should one do the difficulty train ratings for tree climbers? Yeah, if a cache requires special equipment to obtain, then it can achieve that golden five-star terrain or difficulty rating. And I have seen this interpreted in several different ways, which is of course always the choice of the CO and the or the cache owner, the the the, as you, when you own a cache, you get to make those decisions about it. For me, for climbing caches, it comes down to the particular place. If the cache can be safely and reasonably found without any equipment, then I think it's a four or four and a half. But if you need a harness or rope or some sort of extra tool, then it's a five. That makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. There you go. So what I'm, what I'm hearing there is for the most part, tree climbers should be either a four or four and a half, unless uh, you can't, get unless there's no branches on the tree in right which case, it's called a pole and <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> and you you have to get your collapsible ladder out. I was gonna say, what if you happen to already own a telescoping ladder, <laughs> as we discussed last week with Tools of the Trade? There you does go. the difficulty oh, yeah. rating go down for Land Monkey then? Or, <laughs> or because hey, you had to use a tool, is that five? That's how you get the fives. <laughs> yeah. Yes. There you go. So so there you go. If it's a relatively easy tree to climb, it's somewhere between a four and a four and a half. And if mm -hmm. there's something really technical, now we're up to a five. That's that's yeah. our advice from Jesse. 
<laughs> and I always, uh, I mean, safety, of course, is important to consider and, and don't go after one, even if you see that it's a four and you think, oh, I don't need an extra, you know, anything if it's not accessible to you or if it's accessible to you with extra support or extra tools, then please use those, even if yeah. the terrain rating doesn't agree. <laughs> mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. I usually bring Chris along and send him into the really dangerous locations. <laughs> yes. But I bring Wits End along to climb trees. I do climb trees. Yeah. So, you know, it's so fair. Team, team and the effort. spotter is a very important role. And the, the caller of 911 also yeah. a very important yeah. role. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, don't step there. Oh, bummer. <laughs> yeah. So Ryan had a great question. Is a ladder special equipment? I think we were saying yes. Is that what we? Yes. I don't yeah. have one in my geocaching day, you know, go bag. So, mm. no, but if you, you know, if it's required, yes, and not provided. Mm -hmm. So, oh, okay. There was, well, let, let me throw this out. There was a geocache uh, up, up in your area there, JT Coffee, that um, the tot was at the location. Oh. It was a very long pole with a hook on it. Mm -hmm. And they basket up in the tree. Mm -hmm. So that's, I mean, if they provide the tool, I don't think it's a difficulty five. Interesting. Hmm. That's an interesting take on it. But you couldn't get the cash without it. What if somebody yeah. takes the tool? Well, the when I went to go find it, the tool was there, but the cash was gone. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh it hey, it makes the whole thing irrelevant. That that's yeah, poetic. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, by the time I I saw it again, oh look, it's it's been re-enabled and now disabled and done. <laughs> I'm all bummer. Um, but that that was that was a fun one. Yeah, you know, it would have been if you know, but you you could have climbed the tree and gotten mm -hmm. cash, mm -hmm. but you didn't need to. That's true, and I in, have also found my very first five five cash was. Um, a tree climbing clash, a cache that I didn't climb the tree for. We managed to finagle a stick tool <laughs> to get it down. Um, and then amazingly put it exactly back where we found it. Very cool. Yeah. Definitely. Okay. Oh, go ahead. Recat says, uh, he reminds him of a tree climber in South Seattle. He was on the phone with you while climbing the tree to get the cache. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> He's, where are you? Oh, I'm actually in a tree. <laughs> <laughs> that oh. has happened on more than one occasion with more than one phone call. <laughs> What's up? What are you up to? I'm in a tree. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to hang up now. I think I need both hands. <laughs> yeah. I'm on a boat. Holding it around. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So we mentioned the fizzy grid and mm -hmm. that you're, you've done one loop. I've done one loop. Yes. Hooray. How Hooray. far away from the second loop? I, I mean, am. Your chart. If you look at my chart here, which if we go back, this is my little notebook of my geocaching goals. And it lists all the ones that actually I was going to do for 2020. And those are kind of, you know, out the, the, uh, yeah. a lot They're of them are out the window. Down. They're fine for 2021. Exactly. I can just white out that zero or <laughs> I can just make it an eight and then I'll be way ahead. <laughs> yeah, you go. Um, I, mean, I like I, the way she I, thinks. I have no problem with that. <laughs> um, so the, um, my, my goal originally for t one of my goals for 2020 was to finish my second and third loops. So I was uh, five away from my number two and significantly more than that, I think 11 away from my third loop. And I have checked off a couple on my third loop so far. Um, and um, I am also chipping away at those variety fizzies that we were just talking about. So my multi fizzy, my puzzle fizzy, my small fizzy, that sort of thing. Okay. Wow. And do you have one of those notebooks every year? Uh, no, I, well, it, uh, this is my first official <laughs> one. I just kind of would add, you know, to a different notebook or, or just kind of commit to one, but this is the time I thought I'd, okay, I really I'll write these down for, um, uh, actually we'll say for TAS, hashtag for TAS, what's in Jesse's notebook. Ooh, there you go. <laughs> Love it. Stay tuned for that. Yeah. <laughs> 20, 28 goals. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> Look at that. She's sharp, doesn't miss a beat. That's yeah. right. <laughs> you, you picked up some new fans tonight, Jesse. Right. <laughs> so, so those who are familiar with this podcast, who've listened to it a few times, know that this is about the point in the show where uh, I like to get up on a soapbox and, and drop something controversial, <laughs> which is Chris's oh, favorite boy. part of the show. <laughs> Here so, we go. So I want to go down this road of these fizzy loops. Um, mm -hmm. I think they seem a lot easier in some regions than they are here in the Pacific Northwest. Um, most cashers that I know up here have somewhere between zero to six loops mm -hmm. max on mm -hmm. their fizzy. Um, but I know of many cashers from the Midwest, the East of North America, who have like 20 to 30 loops with the same number of fines total. So I say, what gives? Jesse, what yeah. are your thoughts? Yeah, I, I, I think that's great. A great question. I get a little green with envy when I look on Instagram and I see people holding up a cash like loop number 50. And it's like, <laughs> not that I'm thinking they're not fibbing or anything like that or being dishonest, but I, I am envious that um, I'm working on loop two uh, and um, I've, been, I've found a lot of different caches. I think um, I think that provides an, a great opportunity for CEOs in the Pacific Northwest to get a little creative with their hides and other folks in the community to uh, to be thoughtful about their DT combos. Part of it, I think we have a lot of, um, we just have a lot of urban hides. And so it kind of mm. limits what exactly you can do. There's just a whole lot of, you know, one and a half, one and a half type stuff. Um, and I think it also has to do with the fact that, you know, our, our beautiful Pacific Northwest doesn't have a ton of wide open flat space, which is perfect for power trails. Yeah. And some power trails are just, you know, one and a half, one and a half, into infinity, but some of them are challenge power trails. And like we were talking about, sometimes those can provide some diversity in the DT ratings. And um, I get a lot of my DT diversity from challenge caches and those kind of older challenges. And so I suspect it. Oh, oh. She froze. Internet, internet freeze. Oh, no. You guys, you saturated the internet. It's, That's it's it. This, we broke it. It's the Seattle freeze right here with a Linwood yeah, freeze. Right. So we're gonna we're gonna wait for Jesse to to reconnect and join us here. And uh, while she's doing that, I want to throw another thought on exactly where she was going with this, and that's in the Pacific Northwest. We have these beautiful mountains with great forests and wonderful trails, but they're hard trails. There's mm. they're they're steep, and so generally when people hide caches on those trails they tend to hide them at a lower difficulty rating because they figure, hey, if you're already going up that mountain, we're, gonna, we're not going to make the find that hard. So generally, we have a lot of high terrain mm -hmm. and, and low difficulty caches is what we tend to have a lot of here. Um, I see uh, Cache Canada had a really good uh, feedback about the east. He said the number of caches overall in the geographic area, which is a good point. They've got some pretty high cache saturation. I see Jesse's. Uh, joining us here in the backstage. Chris will bring her in. Uh, there she is. She's I'm um, back. I think that and, happened last uh, time too. <laughs> <laughs> so well, you know, nine o'clock on the internet on Thursdays is Yeah, down. it's it's peak traffic. Yeah. There you I go. Know. <laughs> so I'm going to finish this with Cash Canada. He also said uh, the challenge caches and the high DT hides, water trails, et cetera, are some of the reasons mm -hmm. why you'll find um, in the in the east of North America that there are, uh, it's a little easier to get those fizzy loops. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and Jesse, do you want to, did you want to finish your thoughts there? Where did I lose you we or you lose remember. me? <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> I was thinking the, the fact that the Pacific Northwest doesn't have those big flat open places, which right. are, are really easy for big, long, mm -hmm. Uh, power trails, specifically challenge power trails. And I get a lot of my DT diversity from old challenges that are, you know, four, four and a half or something like that. Um, and we just don't have those in our beautiful terrain of the Pacific Northwest. So I think our terrain has something to do with our terrain rating. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I was just talking about that, like the the mountains, the lots of lots and lots of mountains, steep trails. So people tend to hide caches that are a lower difficulty, higher terrain. Yeah. yeah. And location, like you said, region makes a big difference. Uh, GSM times two said, uh, I have tens of thousands of fines. Haven't filled my fizzy yet. It's very difficult in Southern California. Mm -hmm. So yeah, mm -hmm. same, same story there. So 
Y'all are more loopy than I am. By a long <laughs> but let's just say people want to work on this challenge of completing ah. that fizzy loop. What's the best way? Do you have any advice for going about looping? Yes. Get a notebook. No. <laughs> yes. Um, I think that's great. <laughs> so the first thing you want to do is figure out what squares you have and that what you don't have. So what you still need and your not yet achieved boxes are on your statistics page on your geocaching account. And there are other sites like Project GC that'll show you this info too. And then you can use the search tool geocaching.com will do it. If you search, it'll, you can pick a very specific DT rating, which is relatively new, I think. And then um, Project DC will do that for you too. And they'll map out all of the ones. So if you know, you see you need a three and a half, four and a half, then you can tell the system that's what you're looking for. And then it will map out all of the ones that you have that are just that specific rating. Then you get to work. You might have to solve a tricky puzzle that is maybe harder than you normally would solve, or you have to go on a tough hike or something like that that you don't normally do just because that's a, a rating that you don't normally have. So you ha make sure that you read the cash description and know what you are getting into before you go. Um, that's one of those leave no trace principles, know before you go. Um, I, and I think we've all been victim to not quite knowing exactly all the things we should have not known before yeah. we left. I know I, so speaking for myself, that happens nearly all the time. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but some of the trickier finds make for some of the best stories, I think. So even if you know it's going to be a frustrating thing or you know you're going to be there for a while because it's a hard one, that's going to make it all the more interesting once you find it. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Very well said. Should we go back and, <laughs> and uh, talk about some of our listeners and their fizzy grids or matrix or other things? You're the boss, man. Okay. Alan, <laughs> Alan Richards says he's six short Ooh. of over 2,400 finds. It's been a good challenge. Nice. Uh, Bry Lang says, I filled my fizzy grid four times and I'm only five away from my fifth time. Nice. Just finding our way, four left from their fourth loop. Cash the Line is currently working on fizzy loop number 32. Wow. Very nice. That's like rock chalk. I yeah. Know. The machine. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Dormore, I have nine left for loop number three. Three Ham says, I'm two holes short of my seventh loop. Nice. Both in Washington State and he's stuck in British Columbia. I just want to say three hams is usually two holes short of the loop. So, <laughs> oh, so uh, Mrs. Landshark says uh, we filled our first last month. So very nice. Very nice. Very nice. That is a very satisfying find. That eighty-first <laughs> box. <laughs> Indeed. Cash Canada, I've filled 20, and that's considered low for our area in southern wow. Ontario. 20, wow. that's insane. <laughs> uh, and Cash the Line says, yes, southern Ontario is filled with many, many of each DT. Nice. Wow. Road trip. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ryan is three away from his, or four away from his third. Awesome. Hope you get that soon. Yeah. And, and uh, MC3Cat says, I'm six away from completing the fizzy. All four and four and a half terrain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Four and a half, I tell you, that's the hard one. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And uh, three hams no no longer like <laughs> my monkey. <laughs> <laughs> oh well. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, where are we at here? There you go. Um, Destination hey. Ontario. Yeah. 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 No kidding. Well, uh, thirty-two. Yeah. It sounds like you could fill a fizzy grid in a weekend. Yes. No kidding. No kidding. <laughs> well, and, uh, you know, there's some great geocaching out there in Ontario, including they've got a fantastic geo tour. The, I think it's called the, uh, the geocaching capital of Canada geo tour. That uh, is definitely one to look at as well. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, Jesse, I think you've got a few stories that you can share with us as well. Um, oh yeah. what about, uh, the story about finding your last square? Oh, I found my, that, yeah, thinking back to that satisfying 81st box, I identified a cache that I wanted as my 81st box in Oregon State. So I drove down there and got a couple other challenges that worked for boxes, but I picked this one particular one. I think it was something like a four, four and a half or a four and a half, four or something like that. 
and I actually put it in my Instagram stories today. It was on a tree that had fallen over a river. So you had to climb up the tree and crawl over the top of this giant log. And, um, it wasn't so clear you had to, it was clear that you had to be on the log but it wasn't clear where on the log you had to be in the roots in the bark in the other end of the tree on the other side thankfully it was a warm day but i was traipsing back and forth in the water you know how much do i have to climb on this thing and i spent a good long time and i thankfully had a um a phone a friend come bail me out who appreciated i was like i am not getting off this tree until <laughs> i find this cache and i knew it was there it had recently been found but i searched forever and ever and messaged the last finder who then uh, just said call me did it and we he, and they walked me through not as so much of a spoiler but made sure that i was signing the log when they signed off so that was pretty mm. great <laughs> yeah, awesome. so this yeah. time you were the one in the tree on the phone <laughs> <laughs> i think she's yeah. usually the one in the tree on the phone <laughs> this time the tree was horizontal yeah. that's right and i was <laughs> making the call <laughs> Yeah. And I, these are, you know, I, I'm spending a lot of my home evenings, like I said in the beginning, kind of building trips for days that we can all get out. And I've been using, um, I, what I often do when I build a trip is pick a key cache of the day and then have that as my number one target and then kind of fill in caches that I could find to and from there that just happen to be nearby or, you know, DNFs or from previous or something like that. And so I'm building trips around these fizzy boxes that I'm looking for. And I can have that one cache is my one big target. And then I get a bunch of other bonuses between home and there. Sounds like you're the person we want to go on road trips with. Yeah. I'm a big trip planner. <laughs> I know that might come as a huge shock. Um, but, that's that's but a different notebook. Yeah, it, <laughs> that's yeah. Right. there's a yeah, there's a bunch of online tools that help do that. You know, um, even pocket queries when cash is along mm -hmm. a route, they'll do that for you and cash tour will do that for you. And um, it is a really great way to think positively about when we are more free to roam. Absolutely. That makes a lot of sense. Um, We've got some, uh, our chat lackeys dropped a bunch of stuff in here in uh, for us to, to talk about here. Helen wow. from Landsharks had said a pro tip is find out which DT combinations your caching buddies are missing and hide caches with those combinations. That's a nice thing to do. <laughs> that Isn't is a that very nice? nice thing to do. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Three Hams had shared that uh, DT is near and dear to him. And he did share earlier as we were going through the lists of uh, that he is working hard mm -hmm. uh, on, on achieving that as well. Yeah, Mrs. Nice. Landsharks also um, talked about solving and answering a land monkey earth cache from a plane with wow. a few travelers. Is that allowed? I, I have an earth cache. It's a T5 earth cache, and it sits uh, about halfway between Vancouver Island and uh, the mainland of Metro Vancouver. And okay. uh, most people do it from a ferry, but technically you can do it from a low-flying plane. Wow. Yeah. wow. Impressive. There you go. Uh, let's see. Coon and Bud says, I got several DT riding a boat where the owner did maintenance. Lazy, mm. but filled several squares. <laughs> <laughs> well done, I, Coon and Bud. Yeah. yeah I, I think there was one cache during a uh, Tri-Cities cache machine that we were just at the right place at the right time. The owner had just removed the cache from an island. And I think it was a difficulty five because you needed a boat to get there. And he goes, I just brought it off. Do you want to sign it? <laughs> nice. Well, yeah, I guess I do. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I'm interested, Jesse, you just pulled out your pen and your notebook. What are you, what are you making? Oh, well, I was writing about how I gotta, I gotta look up that earth cash that is, um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not certain I have that DT rating for earth caches. So All I right. gotta look that up. I'll tell you what, I'll bring it up in the after show. Oh, yeah. Look at, <laughs> yeah. Yes, <I'm> taking <laughs> notes, right? Like, so she's taking notes, Len. <laughs> and uh, 
GSM times one, GSM times two wants to know, is a plane special equipment? <laughs> well, that, that's why it's a T5 because mm -hmm. you need a boat to, to get that one for sure. Yeah. You definitely do not want to swim to that earth dash. Please do not swim to that earth dash. <laughs> Oh no! Public there's a service announcement. <laughs> oh, um, let's see. Cash the line. He's talking with three ham, saying we have paddling, paddle caching trails, loads of tree climbers, and endless challenge caches. Lots nice. of diversity. Nice. Sounds like a great place to be geocaching. So, oh, in that yeah. part of, uh, Ontario. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, Cash Canada, in, in support of Helen, said, uh, that's a Southern Ontario thing. Hi, DTs for your friends. <laughs> there you go. Nice. Very cool. All right. Well, um, what do you think? Did we, uh, we got through a lot of this stuff. Uh, I am looking forward to seeing all you guys in person again, uh, getting down to some events down your guys' way. Um, you know? Oh, yeah, events. I remember we'll, when we used to have again those. Sometime soon. I, I have never looked forward to events more than I am right now. <laughs> right? Yeah, for sure. Ah, it'll be we're, so great to see everyone. this an event. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, hey, uh, JT Coffee, thank you for joining us. Uh, Anytime. Thank now, you for having me. If you want to stick around, uh, we understand if you have to leave, but we'll do the after show, a time where we just chat with our... Uh, with our listeners and it's just a special time. We enjoy it. I'm here for it. <laughs> okay. And folks, thank you for tuning in. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Cashing in the Northwest and we've got more shows for you next week, next Thursday at nine o'clock when the internet gets slow, <laughs> you need to learn how to make a geocaching video. Yeah. And yep, then gonna, two weeks actually, out, Chris, be yes. before you move on, we've got a special guest for that show. It's going to be, uh, some of the folks may recognize the name. It's going to be Ko Makino from uh, the uh, Washington area who's going to be joining us. Nice. Uh, talking now, about is it Ko Makino and the kid or just uh, Ko Makino? I'm not sure if the kid's going to join, but it's definitely Ko Makino. Okay. Okay. <laughs> we'll have to, we'll have to apply a little pressure. <laughs> it's not like it's a school night. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. every night's a school night now isn't it yeah well yeah, either all the, or none yeah, yeah. But, the, but the commute is easy here yeah um and then two weeks out uh jt coffee maybe we should have you back because as we go on geocache road trips we need to know what to eat oh yes what's your favorite snacks on a geocache road trip but don't tell us now. Wait two Ooh. weeks. I oh, almost did too. Yeah. Oh my yeah. gosh. Yeah. We'll have to tune in in two weeks and find out. Hold right. uh, well, 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 on. Did I just hear that JT Coffee's coming back in two weeks? Maybe. <laughs> maybe right. so. I mean, maybe she can come back in three weeks to talk about how to get oh started my gosh, on puzzle caching because I often ping her with puzzle questions. So <laughs> there you who go. knows? <laughs> awesome. Lots oh my of gosh. A ca uh, caching cooking show. Mm. Oh my gosh. Oh, there we you, go. You know how much baking goes on a during the show? Uh, <laughs> I mean, I mean, thing. Well, none. Now there's a flour shortage. It has to all be gluten free. Oh, I didn't know that. That's not good. Oh, they'll just, it's hard to find in stores because it's, you know, people are yeah. uh, gathering things. Everybody's anyway. baking, right? Gotcha. Gotcha. Yes. Well, uh, before we head into the after show with JT Coffee and talk about lots of uh, other random stuff that you guys have been talking about, which is awesome, and we're looking forward to that, we also want to make sure that we take a moment to thank Land Sharks, our corporate Denali level sponsor. Landsharks.ca is the outdoor adventure and geocaching store. Check them out online. They do ship orders online daily. Um, well, they, they ship online orders daily. They don't ship the orders online. They take mm -hmm. online orders and ship them. This. I, I probably just confused the whole thing. But anyways, <laughs> place your online orders with Land Sharks and you'll get it. Okay. And you'll get it. <laughs> you'll get it. Yeah. <laughs> we also want to thank our faithful Denali level supporters. That is, of course, Land Sharks, but it's also JP's Geo Designs, Limax, Team Squirrel, and Groovy Owl. And folks, if you want to know more about supporting the show, go on over to our website. Click that Patreon link on thecachingnw.com, a website. Thank you. <laughs> I look forward to that extra breath there. Hey, you know, some people who have done that, um, Fairwood West. M-Nerve. 
Kitty Quest. <laughs> Island Sky. LG 9000. Wino Seattle. Seabeck Tribe. Acker Duck. Kev. Mac D. Team Noltex. Tick Magnet. Candle Barb. Allerobric. GSM times two. The Geo Nav Pros. Segehove. CRS 98. Kid Vegas 19. Subway Mark. The Geo Travelers. Dora Moore. Keats 94. Trexer Zero. Boomer 365. <laughs> Be Pendragon. Camp Clan. Genies. Broncos fan for life. Sprouter. <laughs> T Sayer. Dune Buddy. MC3 Cats. Logwork. And Teus. Wet Coaster and Greenwards. Millie Robson. And our newest on a boat. Ooh, on a boat. On a oh, boat. Awesome. Oh, Jesse, it's been great having you. You are sticking around for the after show, but in case somebody has to leave, somebody wanted to get in touch with you, how would you like them to reach out and connect? <laughs> Literally. <Please don't>. Any- <laughs> 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 There's too many jokes. Too many. I know. Okay. <laughs> Cashy name JT Coffee. You can find me on uh, the geocaching website friend me or message me there um, happy to chat on instagram and twitter i am jesse j-e-s-s underscore s-e-a and, and some good night. content out there on instagram right now Indeed. Which end, where do we find you right here thursday oh, night there you are yeah <laughs> when the internet's slow you know <laughs> that's it i'm online yeah in the upper uh, left of your screen right but yeah, geocaching message center, like Jesse said, is where you can find me. Twitter, Facebook, come what's end there and Instagram are the places. Let's see, who else? Land Monkey. Well, you know what? I've made things simple. Uh, I used to have all kinds of different things to point people to, but I made it really, really simple. Just go to landmonkey, L-A-N-M-O-N-K-E-Y dot C-A, and everything's there. I've got a brand new website. It's got everything there, including, of course, the shameless self-promotion plug of the new book. It's out there. It's available. It's the geocaching guidebook to Metro Vancouver and the Fraser Valley. Um, please support your local author. Rave reviews. <laughs> Chris of the Northwest. Hey, just look for caching in W. Sometimes I have to spell it out as caching in the Northwest, but you know what? You know, what's better. Things are always better when you can go to one place, head on over to caching in W.com slash hosts. There you can find all those things and some things we don't tell you because there's things about things that we don't talk about. Hmm. But until then, we want to thank you for taking the time to listen to this episode of Cashing in the Northwest. Don't forget that you can be part of the show. Call in to 253-693-TFTC. Leave us a comment, ask us a question, or or remind us to wear pants anytime of the day or night. <laughs> of course, you can email us at feedback at cashingnw.com. Your support helps keep the quality shows coming. If you like the show, please click on the Patreon link on the cashingnw.com website and subscribe on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Spotify, and more. <gasps> Give us a thumbs up or review. This show is produced by Chris Umfenauer, Jim Paul Woods, and Jay Kennedy. It's licensed under a Creative Commons Attribution 3.0 license, copyright 2020 by Chris Umfenauer. And folks, here's the time you've all been waiting for. We got through the content, but I hear from you, you really like the after show. The after show. Hashtag Fatas. Yeah, there are people out there that really don't even care about the show. Imagine that. <laughs> Including just me. Want the after show. <laughs> oh, you mean the show show. I'm not naming names. <laughs> we did it. We made it here. Oh, too much fun. Too much fun. Um, so we've got some great after show stuff. Uh, we've got uh, hashtag pants are overrated. <laughs> yeah. There, there you go. Thank you, Christy. If there's anything we've learned from this quarantine, it's that. Mm-hmm. So I got it. I got to say, I, I am actually wearing pants. I don't know. if you're... Nope. No, no, oh. just sit down. <laughs> Thank you so far. All right. I actually did put on pants for the podcast tonight. And what? I have a t-shirt that I wore. I have a t-shirt that has a little trophy on it and it says, I put on pants today. 
Mm. And uh, I wore that uh, for a video conference at work. And uh, <laughs> uh, it was uh, it was responded to quite positively by my coworkers. That's a good I've one. Seen, I've seen a t-shirt. This is I put on pants for this. Yeah. <laughs> With like a question mark. <laughs> Chat room says proof not required. <laughs> we will take your word for it. Uh, awesome. Well, there you go. Um, uh, boop -a -doop -a -doop -a -doop. uh, California. So cash the line says California fizzy mention it. It's GC one, one echo eight, uh, November, M. November. Thank you. Um, I guess that's the original fizzy. Is that what that mm -hmm. is? Very likely. The fizzy magic fizzy. Okay, cool. Oh, okay. There you go. GC one, one E eight N very cool. What else? Okay. Bucket list. Bucket list. Are you, <laughs> Jesse's making notes in the notebook. Are you right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> the notebook's filling up. Yeah. <laughs> you have the, page, the page for California caches you must find? I, I don't. She does now. That's why there's all these extra pages. <laughs> she she does now, yeah. <laughs> uh, confirmation from Cash Canada. That is the very first fizzy challenge. So there yeah. you go. Very cool. Oh, uh, the cash line says it is date restricted. So that's mm. interesting. Ooh, there you tricky. go. Read the description. It's hard to get yes. a date nowadays. <laughs> you can still find prunes in the store, but dates okay. are harder. Yeah. They, they're tastier. That's why. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What else have we got? Uh, Highlands guy says just to stir things up, should new physical caches be published these days? Not in Washington Ooh. State. Not in Washington State, yeah. Yeah, there's a bunch of states that are doing that now that have moratoriums on new published hides. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, it's it's similar to different states have different uh, shelter-in-place rules at this time. Right. Um, so, yeah. So, I, I don't have a problem with it. Uh, somebody in the chat had said earlier, now's the time to do a blackout challenge. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> No kidding. Yeah. No new caches to ruin your streak just when you have it almost done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, Ryan shared that. Kansas oh, yeah. is still publishing. Kansas. Yeah. Okay. British Columbia, we're currently still publishing, although there are there are a number of people who've decided that uh, they're going to disable their caches. And, you know, mm -hmm. fair enough. If you're the cache owner, you can make that choice. Exactly. Um, um, I have not done that with my caches. I'm letting mine stand. But uh, um, I think there was another... There was another uh, there's another comment somewhere while we're on this. Is it in the I saw some people talking about maybe it didn't make it into the fatas here, but I saw some people talking about noobs, uh, lots of noobs finding their caches lately. Mm -hmm. Oh yes. I think it was GSM times two. Anyway, somebody was commenting on it a while ago. I've seen that I've seen that recently too, that that question. Do you find do you have a lot of new people finding your caches for the first time? Or, yeah, and yeah. I yeah. definitely noticed it. You guys too? Yes. I bet that, um, I mean, families are looking for things to do. Yeah. And they're looking for cheap, easy, accessible things. And they've heard of this geocaching thing, or maybe they've tried it once before. And they're like, that's something that doesn't involve a whole lot of people or a whole bunch of time. And it's an outside fun activity. Let's go try something. <laughs> mm -hmm. okay. and, and Chat Lackey's all over it. He, it was GSM times two. And the follow-up question, GSM times two, is do you reach out to them? Oh. Which I have not done, but that's a really good point because maybe these people are brand new to the yeah. game and they could use some pointers. Um, who knows? Um, I, I have reached out to one person who was a brand new cacher who found one of my Earth caches and sent in a log that was... Um, I think the log was like great place, something like that, <laughs> and, and no answers. So I, I very gently replied back and said, hey, I'm really glad that you made it. And I saw that he had found all the traditionals in the same area, which is, you know, it's that mm -hmm. kind of talking is super easy on geocaching. Yeah, well. yeah. And uh, especially when somebody has hardly any finds and said, hey, um, here's a point. You know, I, I sent him the link to the Earth Cache guidelines and said, when you find one of these, here's how it's generally done. If you want to uh, take the time to send me in some answers, that would be great. I mean, I'm not going to be a total hard ass about it, but... Uh, um, because the person was a noob, I thought, well, you know, yeah. let them reach out, let them know. But I haven't been reaching out to anybody else. That's an interesting, uh, interesting. I haven't thing. noticed a large number on my caches. I only have a few, so it's not like I have a huge bank to draw from. But oh, in the past, if somebody finds my one of my caches and posts in there that, hey, it's my first cache or whatever, or I just started, 
I have sent them messages in the past that, hey, welcome to geocaching. It's a great hobby. Hope you're having fun. And, you know, here's a few tips. Mm-hmm. And, you know, what are you doing Thursday night? Come to this new podcast. <laughs> there you go. The internet's slow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what are you doing Thursday night? Because we know the internet's not working. That's right. You're welcome to join our podcast. <laughs> When we were getting some caches published in our area, I was trying to actually put out some new ones for cachers in my neighborhood. I have some folks that live just near me, and I was trying to put some out for friends just so that we had lunchtime things to do. Um, so I've got a couple new ones out, but not too many. There you go. And uh, June shared that uh, she's reached out to several noobs, uh, mostly because they need a little help playing the game by the rules. And uh, Cash Canada is on board with you, Jim. Yeah. (laughs) Send him an email, (laughs) welcome to the hobby, and say, oh, by the way, check out Caching in the Northwest. There you go. Um, Oh, you guys. Yeah, I don't know that anybody I've directed here has ever actually showed up on Thursday night, (laughs) but... (laughs) Uh, maybe I scared them away. <laughs> I know some people who I I don't think will ever come here. But anyway. <laughs> oh, too funny, too funny. Um, what else have we got here? A lot. You guys are so awesome. It's so busy, mm. so busy. I know um, this chat is just yeah. off the hook. You're all free for the next three hours, right? Because we're going <laughs> through all these comments. <laughs> we want to thank everybody for making us have to stay with JT Coffee for another <laughs> extra couple hours. So. <laughs> That's fantastic. I mean, once again, not a school night, so <laughs> that's right. <laughs> yeah, not a work night, technically. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Depends what you do for work. Um, so let's see. Udak wants to know: Is Fizzy Magic still caching? Yeah. I think so. There you go. Good question. Yeah, I haven't actually checked there. Uh, let's um, say yes then. Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna say oh, yes. You know they contact we... us to tell us otherwise. <laughs> yeah, yes, no, we, we yes. have a research department in this oh. podcast. All you have to do is ask, is Fizzy Magic still caching? <laughs> Just wonder and, it out loud and then somehow so, the magic, the, uh, the info. Still in the forums. I'd say, yep. Yeah. Mm, there you go. And somebody in our local Facebook caching group said, like, Fizzy Magic just found one of my Fizzy challenges. I want to think fairly recently. Um, so, yeah, I bet. That's very cool. Awesome. Um. Udak also wants to know, uh, Jesse, yeah. um, do you know how gc.com ended up selling snag the tags? Ah, yeah. Snag the tag, if you aren't familiar, is a game that is kind of geocaching adjacent. That is, um, it's like an FTF game. People hide tags. If you find them, you're the only finder of that tag, and then you can redeem it for a trackable geo coin um, that are really cool. Um, I am involved on the back end of that game as the reviewer of the hides, um, which is really fun. And the the nice thing about that game is that Snag the Tag as a group runs games. um, And then different partners run different games. The WSGA, for example, runs games and they have they have their own, they make their own little rules and they parameters of the game and the type of the coin and so forth. So um, G, uh, Shop Geocaching is on that second track. They're a partner and they um, they wanted to run their own game. So they did. And they're, uh, it's a mammoth game, um, uh, Mission Mammoth. And it's on hold right now. All mammoths are frozen in permafrost <laughs> until the... Uh, <laughs> Until the the coast is clear, and <laughs> once things warm up, then they'll be back out again. Fantastic! And and here's the biggest question of the night. Yes. What's in Jesse's notebook? What's in the notebook? Well, let's see. Uh, my list of goals, which was second and third fizzy loops, fill the multi calendar, fill the small calendar, the micro calendar, the five a day, at least a thousand finds, Puget Sounds Park Challenge, um, the where I go fizzy light, the multi fizzy light. I get a CETO in January and February. Oh, I did that one. Oh, and and uh, check Ooh, that off. And sure. uh, live <laughs> box checking. This is very exciting. And um, seven <laughs> events in seven days, which is another challenge. And I did do that one. So then um, that was my that's my table of contents. Mm. And then I have pages that are that my um, progress on each of these. This is the fizzies. These are the calendars. And uh, these are just if I, you know, you, you can fill in your general find calendar, then you can fill in your calendars using only puzzles. Did that one. So I'm working on my multis. I'm also working on my micros. 
I'm working on my smalls and my regulars. These are just year calendars and the little dots are the days that I need one. I'm working on the cities and towns challenge, which is a really cool challenge in uh, Washington. And you find 120 little tiny adorable cities and towns and you have to find a cache in there. Um, I'm halfway through that one. So I'm just plugging away and these are all the cities and towns I still need, which is many. So um, Jesse, have you done the gladder bladder challenge? Yes, I have. That's one of my favorite challenges in Washington state. I love yeah. that one. I have done that one. Also working on a couple Thomas guides challenges. So that's in there and um, that's difficult to do. So this is the Island County one and the, all the pages mm -hmm. as they are. Um, and, um, and then a couple other pages on puzzles or uh, yeah, puzzles I was thinking on or uh, wouldn't it be cool if I did a puzzle with this and wrote down the idea, but yeah, there you go. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> So, so I'll the explain bladder. this one. The Glider oh, yeah. Bladder Challenge. Uh, actually, you know what? I'll throw it over to Jesse. Jesse, tell us what the Glider Bladder Challenge is. That is finding a certain number of caches, I want to say 25, that are located at rest stops. There you go. Mm -hmm. Along the hi highway rest stops in Washington State and Oregon State. Yeah. Pretty That's great. A, that was a fun challenge. Yeah, enjoyed mm -hmm. that one. Because, you know, you get to do it as you're exploring Washington and Oregon. Exactly. And nearly every rest stop, both directions has at least one cache at it yes. in Washington, Oregon. So it's, I think every, yeah. Rest yeah. stop has at least yeah. one cache, if not four or five. Yeah. Yeah. Lots of fun. So paper notes, old school. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Yeah. Come I, Kino says, I feel bad for having a goal of just find a cache. <laughs> You know what? You know what? Jesse sets the bar so high. You, you know what? You play the game how you play it. You I know. actually have a subscription to these notebooks. They um, it's a, from a company called Field Notes. You can't uh -huh. see because it's kind of embossed, but okay. they're out of Chicago. And I get three, like I guess a, a notebook a month, and uh, I fill them with all kinds of things. <laughs> That's so cool. Good for you. Well done. Uh, oh, let's see. You should start a YouTube channel with all of this. <laughs> oh, <laughs> my challenges. Yeah. Or my 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 notebook contents. It does sound like a good Insta story theme. There, there you go. go. Absolutely. Well, we were talking just before the show that we should have a new section on the podcast called "Let's Ask Jesse." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this may happen. Just, I'm just saying, this may happen. <laughs> Uh, uh, let's see what else have we got yeah she can do that in her spare time <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, God. uh let's see okay so land monkeys earth cash mm. is gc7 oh, yeah. victor six um golf charlie it. golf charlie thank you geocaching <laughs> Geo yeah. yeah oh yeah all you have to remember is Seven Victor Six. That's right. Because GC on the front. GC. GC. Did you do that on purpose? That's cool. I, I wish I had. I, that was <laughs> pure luck. Pure luck. <laughs> Does anybody have GC, GC, GC? Well, you know what? Ooh. The person after me or somewhere after me would have gotten GC 7 V7 GC. Oh. Oh. Well, now I got it. Yeah. Oh, is this a time when you just wonder <laughs> things and then they just yeah. like materialize? Yeah. <laughs> I wonder what cash is GC7B7GC. Hmm. You, <laughs> oh, you have to phrase it. I wonder if the research department could find there it out. There you go. There you go. No, that's, uh, yeah. So that's my. Um, yes, there's a GC, ooh. GC, GC. Oh, nice. That's amazing. Where is that? It's been archived. It's lost in the woods. Oh, shoot. Yeah. Rats. There you go. Uh, oh, and there you go. Oh, what's up? And, and of course, there's a GC7 GC GC. <laughs> oh, nice. Uh, leave it to the research department. Yeah. High quality. Nothing but the best. You High know, quality. there's a fatas question here. Len <laughs> Monkey. Yes. Why do you give an extra pause before saying <gasps> website? A website? Um, because I really want to emphasize how passionate I am about the caching in the Northwest 
a website. I find that it's uh, a great resource for all caching in the Northwest information. And I just really want people to have a moment to soak it in and appreciate all the work that Jim and Chris have done on that website. Primarily Chris. Mostly Jim. There you go. There's my answer. Is that acceptable? Am I allowed to come back next week? I just thought that you were taking like website A and putting the A at the beginning and saying Mm. A website. website." (laughs) Almost. Okay. Uh, yeah, three hands says Len Monkey's from the William Shatner School of Dramatic Effect. <laughs> <laughs> and that, yes. Nice. Uh, Keats wants to know if this global pandemic has affected your find rate oh, and how goodness. you all are coping. Yeah, has it ever? Yeah. Worst, worst find rate year ever. Yeah. Welcome yeah, to know. caching like wit's end. Because <laughs> <laughs> it hasn't affected mine at all because I haven't hardly been anyway. But uh, but you know what? I, I think like Jesse said off the start of the show, um, it's uh and I guess that's the back half of Keats's question is how are you coping? It's given opportunity to do a lot of other things. I mean, gosh, I got my book published. I was able yeah. to uh um uh, thanks, Jesse. Uh <laughs> I've been able to actually do work around the house, believe it or not, <laughs> instead of going geocaching. Yeah. So there's some pluses out of it. But uh, mm-hmm. you know, uh I'm not doing as much trip planning yet as Jesse is doing, although that's <laughs> coming now. Uh, yeah. Mrs. Landshark says this is our best find rate year ever. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, Great job. <laughs> <laughs> As opposed to IHAM says, what find rate? Ain't got no find rate. Any worse than it would be negative. <laughs> well, that's of okay, IHAM, then you can only improve after right. all of this. I was going to say, speaking of IHAM, he retweeted something that I thought phrased it well. Uh, it says, you're not working from home. You're at your home during a crisis trying to work. Trying to work, yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. And uh, there you go. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, this is not normal. And this, and, and I, I heard another podcast talk about, and it's okay to not be normal right now. Don't think, well, oh, what's wrong with you for not being normal? No, this, none of this is normal. And, you know, yeah. Yeah. So. Jesse, you posted something along those lines recently, didn't you? Or re- yeah. I've been working through a lot of that because it's I, I I jump on and off the struggle bus with uh, all of this and uh, reminding my, myself of some of those self care things help me jump back off the struggle bus because yeah. I've got it pretty good and it's good to remind myself of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, I think that's you know you've posted Jesse you've posted a few things that I've I've noticed and I thought you know what that's a really great reminder and and I and just you know sincerely I do appreciate some of the stuff that you're posting or reposting. Um, it's been good to kind of help us keep our, uh, keep our perspective on things. So thanks for doing that. Mm-hmm. And folks, yeah, uh, it and helps me. I'm glad it helps follow you. you on Twitter to see those amazing posts. Where do they go? Oh yeah. Uh, you look for Jesse, but instead of spelling it like I do, or like a, like a name, you spell it J E S S underscore S E A, like the ocean C. Yes. C. Very clever. Jesse. Uh, mm-hmm. We were getting a timeout signal from the chat lackey. What's that all about? <laughs> I think he wants to go to bed. He wants to go to bed. <laughs> oh my goodness. It's 10. It's almost 10 30. Yeah. <laughs> I guess it's time to stop breaking the internet. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, there was one more thing. Uh, now, where is Just it? Just one more thing. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. GSM times two has created a few where I go and solved some puzzle caches. Very nice. Good job. Oh, this one. Keats94 says he'll be on CBC with his fiddle on Saturday on a wow. show called Our Vancouver. Wow. Sorry, not geocaching related, but you know what? But that's awesome. That is that awesome. Is, that is awesome. I will be definitely looking to tune in on that. Um, can Keith, we stream that in the U.S.? Uh, I'm not sure, but uh, you know what? We'll figure out some way to make sure we capture that and share it yeah. uh, with our listeners. Congratulations, Keats. That is super cool. If anybody has not seen Keats on the internet, uh, he's been going out in the woods with his fiddle and playing mm-hmm. some uh, some Maritimes tunes, and he's a very accomplished fiddler. And uh, um, it's it's a lot of fun. So thank you, Keats, for finding ways to keep us all uh, positive. CBC. And, yes, there you go. CBC.ca is where to go for you folks. To I'm going to go check that. That's that, that is awesome. 
Is that a cash listing? <laughs> no. <laughs> we were talking about that. So. Congrats. That's what I first yeah, thought awesome. it was. I'm like, what? What is? Which one's that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's super she already cool. wrote it down in her notes. Make sure you guys check that out on Saturday. That'll that'll be great. Yeah, I'm actually really excited for that. I'm not. I'm not joking at all. I'm not even going to make any weird snide comments about that because I just no. think it's, <laughs> it's flat. It's flat. Really 90, awesome. Oops, says okay. it's channel 99 on Comcast in the Seattle area. Okay. Nice. So there you go. Folks, thank you so much for joining us this evening. If you stuck with us throughout the whole show, <laughs> more power to you. And until next week, get out and get caching in the Northwest.